Portions of the following program may have been pre-recorded. The following program's views, claims, or ideas may not reflect those of WSRR Radio or StylesRebelRadio.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind Enemy Lines, a Cleveland sports show from Pittsburgh. Can't get that anywhere else but here on WSRR Radio. I'm Lucas and I'm joined by Dom. Dom, week one of the NFL season has just wrapped up. We've been waiting long and hard for it and it's finally come and maybe some Browns fans could have waited longer. Um, A very disappointing week one uh, in Cleveland and we'll get into that. Unfortunately for us Cleveland fans, not as disappointing in or excuse me in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, the Pat or excuse me the Steelers win without scoring a touchdown That's in Atlanta right. against the new look Falcons offense. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields starts instead of Russell Wilson. A, a surprise to a couple of different people. I know he was banged up. Um, a lot of different surprises around the NFL. We'll uh, we'll take a quick look around the NFL. Uh, uh, Three hundred and sixty around the league very quickly around Week One. Um, and some scores that surprised us. Uh, but Dom, here we are. Week mm-hmm. one is coming to an end. It's good the, to be back. The NFL season is fully upon us. How do you feel? Super excited just to be able to watch football. It's so good that almost every single night you can turn on the TV and you got some ball to watch. It's it's one of the best feelings in the world, just knowing that you got some, some of the best entertainment on television every single night. But, uh, you know... Four fantasy football leagues, lost them all. Four bets, lost them all. So, you know, I was a little heartbroken that I'd been waiting so patiently for the last seven, eight months. But it's still great. And the Steelers got to win. And that's what's most important to me. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I'm i right there with you on fantasy. I think that this season is going to be a very long one for Manu Ginobili, which is my fantasy <laughs> team name. Um, I mean, Joe Burrow was our is our starting quarterback put up a, a whopping eight points against the Patriots. That really hurt. Yeah. AJ Brown was the lone bright spot with 20 points. But uh, other than that, it's going to be a long, long season, I think, in my uh, in my fantasy football league for me. Anything can happen. You work that waiver wire, you're right back there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, every single year I, I seem to have said that. And then, you know, this is the third year in my dynasty football league, my dynasty fantasy league. You mm-hmm. know, you have the same team every year, pretty much, except for trades and rookies coming in. And you got thirty man um, roster, right? Pretty yeah, close. pretty much a thirty man roster. It's a it's a tough league to win in, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. And mm-hmm. every year, I think I've said the last two years, I've been like, ah, I don't know if we're going to be very good. Whatever, we end up making the playoffs. I'm only one of two teams that have made the playoffs both years. Oh, wow! So you know, props to that. Only yeah. four teams in the playoffs. So. You Making know, the playoffs is half the battle, right? That's there. right. And I was the runner up the first year, mm-hmm. ran into a buzzsaw. Um, once you know, you last year, the, same thing. Once you get in the playoffs in fantasy football, it's it's all luck. Hey, all bets are off, man. Pretty much. All be- any given Sunday. Uh huh. All bets are off. Now, if you if you have a good regular season consistently year over year, you can have a down year every once in a while. But if you're winning at least you know fifty percent of the games, you're a good manager. I think. There Very is good. skill. There is skill in fantasy football. And oh, 100%. It's a good amount of luck, but I do think skill is is more important than luck in fantasy football. Yeah, once you get, get to the playoffs, you got to be a good negotiator story. too. I think yeah. trades in this league are huge. I really never was a huge trade guy. I was kind of like, I'm going to draft my team and I'm going to stick with them. Mm-hmm. But now, like, I have to think like that GM because I, yeah. I I got guys who are like, you know, their contracts coming up and they might go to a different team. And right mm-hmm. now they got a really good quarterback, but I don't know what's going on. And they're getting a little bit older and this guy's a little bit younger. He just had five good games, yeah. but I got I'm going to sell him high. Yeah. I'm going to get a good draft pick. A it's really analytical in this league and I love it. I got a really interesting trade before week one and it was for Baker Mayfield. I would get Ooh. Baker Mayfield. I'd have to give up a first round pick though for next year. First round rookie next year could be incredibly valued. Baker Mayfield's thirty see, years old. But see, he's you're thinking that now, but then the you look at yeah, you look at Baker Mayfield. He had the best passing week of the season. It right? Could be a push for the playoffs, push for a championship if I give this first round. But I think if it could turn into a Brown situation where you're giving all all this up for right this moment, and you kind of set yourself up for failure for a few years. Yeah, very. Uh... Very poignant of you to mention the Browns there and, of yeah. course, have to bring that up. We'll talk about that first real quick. Uh, just talking about week one in the NFL. The Browns come out against the Cowboys, lay an egg, lose 33-17. to 17. 
Deshaun looked really bad. The offense didn't look very good at all in any way. Um, the defense didn't look great. Again, I mean, the Cowboys are a very good offense. You got to give credit where credit is due. But, you know, Browns looked looked pretty bad all around. And, and it's it's left a lot of people in Cleveland kind of scratching their head and just like giving yourself headaches, thinking in circles about mm-hmm. what's going to happen now. Um, you know, they stink in a way. And, you know, Deshaun looks like he stinks. And there's really not anything they can do about it. Yeah. I mean, there's all these years left left on his contract. They've paid him so much money. They can't trade him. No one's going to trade for him. You can't bench him because he's got so much money that you're giving him. You're just eating that paycheck. You can't do that. As much as I'd love to see Jameis Winston play, you pretty much just have to play him and uh, hope to God he finds himself and finds out what he's doing and figures it out. I may and, have good uh, news for you, though. And wait until then. I may have some good news for you. There's what, been he, some recent news. That there was another allegation? Yes. It might be good news for the city of Cleveland. Unfortunately, that might be a good news, as bad as that <laughs> yeah. sounds. As it, awful as the situation is, it is, uh, it, it's a way out for the Browns, possibly. Yeah, and I mean... I don't want to. I don't want to even talk about that because yeah, that kind of gets into the whole thing about how we got him and whatever. Uh-huh. But in week one, the bottom line is it he was really bad. It was really, really bad for Cleveland. Um, and just, I mean, even the way that he pushed the ball downfield, like everyone loved the way that Joe Flacco was aggressive last year. Um, but accurate when he was aggressive. I talked to you earlier today, Dom, when we were playing some golf, like. Mm-hmm. Sean Watson's throwing balls downfield and he's throwing them 10 yards out of bounds, like not even giving guys a chance. Uh, it was really ugly. Jerry Judy, you know, I think he can be decent. He had one really nice touchdown grab on a pretty good route, almost somewhat gave us some life and made us feel like we had a chance at that point. It was 10 to 20. Um, so, you know, and him and Amari Cooper are obviously pretty talented. David Njoku also, who unfortunately left the game on a, on an injury, high ankle sprain. Um, but, you know, it looked really bad. And they didn't really look like they wanted to run the ball. The offensive line didn't look great. There was a lot of pressures. There was like 17 hits on Deshaun Watson yeah. all around pretty much. It was just a sad, sad Sunday and a sad state of affairs for Browns fans. Yeah. I, uh, the way the Browns fans, the way the Browns fans are reacting right now, you would think that they lost 50 to nothing. You would think that it was the biggest whooping ever. You know, it's a, it was a two score game. Obviously, what Deshaun Watson looked like is a different story, and that tells the story of the game more than the, the scoreboard does. But I mean, two for 15 on third downs in this game. He got sacked six times, had 169 yards on 45 attempts with 24 completions. Just not the type of lines you're looking for when a guy has $240 million guaranteed. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned that like, it's not like they got beaten by a hundred, but at the same time, like the Cowboys were up and it, it, you just felt like they had no, they had all the control. The Browns had no chance to come back in this game yeah. because the Cowboys also started playing like conservatively. Cause they were like, well, obviously they can't do anything on offense. Let's just not beat ourselves. Mm-hmm. You kind of saw that in like the Titans and Barriers game. Um, it seemed like the Titans almost beat themselves. In fact, their offensive coordinator this week kind of said, you know, it, it's almost like we could have played better if we just punted on first yeah. and 10 every time because they hurt themselves. They had like three or four turnovers. Bears defense made plays. Um, so the Cowboys really just made sure the Browns didn't do that. Mm-hmm. And with that, I feel like we should jump into some other games real quick. Yeah, we can we keep can it talk on this some... Bears one if you want because Caleb Williams' yeah. uh, stat line wasn't very good himself. 14 of 29, 93 yards. Deshaun Watson might have had a better QB rating than Caleb Williams this week. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a rookie. I'll give him some time. He mm. game managed, though, and, and they came out with a win. I feel like that's, like, the number one thing, especially when it's a rookie quarterback now. Yeah, he was the first number one overall uh, quarterback taken to win his debut in, like, 20 years. Wow. Something crazy. I mean, hey, so you can't, be, he you can't argue with done. the stat like that. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, wins and losses are what matters, not the mm-hmm. stat line. That's always my take. So especially when a rookie quarterback can win. I'm no very complaints. excited to see what the Bears can do. Really excited about them this year. Yeah, I mean, I think they've got talent all over and and a guy now who seems like he can put it together. We can start at the top of week one, mm-hmm. Ravens and Chiefs. Chiefs come out with a win, 27 to 20. What did you think about this game? Quick, we'll go keep it to 30 seconds. Isaiah Likely, tight end one, Patrick Mahomes, MVP, Chiefs, three-peat. That's all I got on this game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the Chiefs are... Probably right up there in three peat. I, I I'm scared about it. Now they have Xavier Worthy as well. Hollywood mm-hmm. Brown didn't even play. They looked amazing. Travis Kelsey didn't really fall off. 
Um, really close game. Isaiah likely, if he would have clipped his toenails that night, maybe they win the game yeah. or at least <laughs> take white, it to OT. White cleats, maybe. Yeah, that's right. A really close You're, toe tap in the back of the end zone. Last thing about this game, though, Derrick Henry. This is this might be a hot take. I don't think he helps this Ravens team at all. Yeah, I think it. Maybe th- goal line, but their their offense is so dynamic. They need a speedster. They need like a Devon A chain back there. They have, I mean, they have the best running game in the in the NFL because of Lamar Jackson. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what running back you have back there. Yeah. But I think that having that threat of this guy, who's obviously been one of the best running backs since mm-hmm. he's come in the league, um, just like adds so much more that you have to defend and so much more that you have to think about when you're playing out there, and it makes it really tough. Uh, what also makes it really tough, another running guy, is Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts played pretty well in Brazil, Brazil in week one against the Packers. Packers mm-hmm. lose 29-34 to 34 against the Eagles. And the Packers also lose Jordan Love. Just yeah. gave him a big contract. Lose him late in that game. Looked like a knee injury. Sprained MCL was the, mm-hmm. was the final diagnosis. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be out like four weeks. When the camera panned to Malik Willis, I think everyone was like, oh, shoot, because they know this guy's bad. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be tough for a few weeks for the Packers. A lot of people forgot that that's who they picked up, and now he's their only backup. Yeah, Sean Clifford, that. maybe they should reactivate him. I don't know what's going on with that, Not but sure. I feel like Sean Clifford show, has shown a lot in preseason. Maybe he's he could be the answer and the guy they turn to real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, next game, Saints absolutely de- demolishing the Panthers, forty-seven to ten. Uh, Saints look good in this, and I, I said last week that the Saints could be a sleeper team this year. I know they're playing one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the league, in the Panthers. But, I mean, anytime you put up 47 points against any NFL team and you only give up 10 points, one of them was a garbage time touchdown against Bryce Young. I mean, that that makes you take notice, no? Yeah. No, I think they got a seriously good defense. The offense, I feel like they do this every single year. They'll have one game where they pop off. But, you know, very impressive. Only thing confusing is why Chris Olave only had a catch or two and they won by this many points. Yeah, I think that uh, Olave, he, I told you earlier, he's a little bit of like a boomer bust guy, mm-hmm. boomer doom guy. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes <laughs> you know, he'll, hit, he'll hit pretty big. Sometimes it's like a doom statistic. <laughs> I've had him for the past two years in fantasy. And, uh, you know, sometimes he has those games where it's 20 points, two touchdowns, you know, whatever. And then other times it's like, oh, he got targeted five times and had three catches and had 15 yards mm-hmm. and just whatever. So, uh, you know, Chris Olave, still definitely one of the best uh, receivers in the NFL, oh, yeah. but you know sometimes it doesn't show. And I mean, they have other guys there too. I mean, they have Shahid, they have Taysom Hill, Derek Carr played well, uh, Alvin Kamara played pretty well. Next game, another one that was a blowout: the Vikings twenty-eight to six over the Giants. The Giants wearing what, in Dom Dom's girlfriend's opinion, was the ugliest uh, football uniforms in the history of the game. Probably a cool take. Probably hasn't seen enough jerseys. Really, you think? I, I mean, what, what's worse Bumblebees. though? Bumblebees are pretty awful. I'm yeah, but I feel fan. like the Those Steelers love the Bumblebees. It's it's uh, unobjectively the worst jerseys ever. I don't know. I kind of like them. I they're, think the they're Bumblebees. They're good for the hideous. There are some that, are, that I've seen worse, I feel like. Those okay. Bron- the Broncos had these AFL uh, reunion type of celebration jerseys, mm-hmm. and they had these socks that were black and or brown and yellow striped mm-hmm. downwards. Those, those ones were pretty ugly. I feel like the Eagles used to have some bad throwbacks, like those yellow and blue the ones. The yellow and blue ones? Yeah. There was another one. I like those. Yeah, I, Maybe I, I it was because that. I liked the ugly. But the Packers had some ugly throwbacks, I feel like, at a certain time. The Packers, yeah, they, they have those ones where they're like the brown helmet, and I guess it's yeah. a throwback to the leather, but whatever. It doesn't matter what they were wearing. The Giants got demolished 28 to 6 <laughs> Sam Darnold absolutely dealing uh he was cooking for the Vikings and I think that the Vikings you know once you hear that JJ McCarthy's out for the year uh, you kind of write him off but you know Sam Darnold's a guy who's got a lot of experience and they've got weapons they've got Justin Jefferson they got Jordan Addison mm-hmm. they've got uh Aaron Jones now in the backfield they've got a pretty good team and I, I think they could turn some heads this year and surprise some people yeah when JJ McCarthy went down that was the best thing to happen to this team all Sam Darnold needed was a chance with a decent team he's never gotten that before and he's got talent I don't think there's any doubt about that really impressed with him Justin Jefferson, obviously one of the best receivers in the league. Who I was most impressed with, though, is Aaron Jones. I didn't think he still had any gas left in the tank. Now, maybe that'll run out once we get into halfway through the season, but 94 yards, averaging almost seven yards a carry and a touchdown. I mean, 
I didn't, I didn't see him having that type of game. Yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised by that. Another game that a lot of people were surprised by was the Patriots beating the Bengals 16-10. to mm-hmm. We've got about 20 to 30 seconds, Dom. Give us your quick thoughts. Joe Burrow kind of laid an egg, like I said earlier. Patriots played good defense. What do you think about this game? Burrow needs his guys. He needs his two wide receiver ones. Yeah, he didn't have that. But more importantly, the Jared, era, uh, Jared Mayo era begins in New England. I think uh, they're going to be decent this season. I like Jacoby Brissett. He seems like a good guy. Yeah, I like Jacoby Brissett too, but I like Drake May more. He's on my fantasy team. Put a first-round pick on him, so hoping to see him soon. You're listening to Behind Enemy Lines on WSRR Radio. The next time you're hanging out with your buds, why not reach down into your pants and whip it out for them? Let them take a good look. At the Live 365 app, streaming WSRR Radio 24-7, 365. Download in your app store today. Back here on WSRR Radio, this is Behind Enemy Lines. 216-859-8699 is the hotline if you want to call us in, leave a voicemail, or text us. Let us know your thoughts on the NFL week one. We're talking about that schedule from week one. We just mentioned the Bengals losing to the Patriots 16 to 10. Stay in the AFC North, the Steelers beating the Falcons 18 to 10. We talked a little bit about this game earlier, winning without scoring a single touchdown against the new look offense of the of the Falcons. Mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins really didn't look great, but it's hard to when TJ Watt was rushing off the edge so hard. He was he looked very good. Yeah. You texted me on Sunday. Three should be Strip sacks. Only got one, right? <laughs> yeah, I actually, I, I, I didn't say that correctly. He should have had two strip sacks. One of them, he had a uh, fumble recovery. Okay, but didn't he? So, I thought he had three, and two of them were called back. Uh, no? Yeah, he had one where he was just so quick that the the refs thought that he was off sides, but he wasn't. Watch the tape. He he had that one. He all was right. all over the game. Basically, he's a game wrecker. He is probably the most dominant player in the nfl outside of patrick mahomes at this point he's going to win the steelers at least four games a season alone and i think this this pat uh this sunday he did it yeah i mean there's very few guys in the nfl or really in all of football who can win you games on defense but Mm -hmm. especially rare in the nfl and tj watt's one of them and the way that this entire defense is built it's really built to make him make plays and uh, and they can do that. And yeah. he, he shows that he can do that time after time. Um, they force turnovers. Him and Alex Highsmith are one of the best duos in the league. And yeah. I don't think Highsmith really gets enough recognition Probably because not. he makes T.J. Watt as good as he is. Uh, like I said, Kirk Cousins, a veteran quarterback, really looked like a rookie out there, looked a little fast-footed, yeah. and he had to be because they were bringing so much heat. Talking about young quarterbacks, two of them facing off in Indianapolis, the Colts and Texans. Colts lose by two points to the uh, division rival Texans, 29-27. to Texans come out on top. C.J. Stroud looks pretty good. Stephon Diggs scores a touchdown. Nico Collins makes a couple good catches. Joe Mixon looked very good in this game. I, I watched a little bit of it, but it seemed like every time I would tune over to it on NFL Red Zone, uh, Joe Mixon was having a pretty good carry. Yeah. He would make a guy miss one or two. Um, I think this Texans team, I mean, this isn't really a surprise to anyone, but they can really turn some heads and they can make some waves in this in yeah. this league this season. Uh, yeah, I agree. I feel like most people expected that coming into the season. I, I think the, the Colts had a really good game, though. Considering yeah, it, like the expectations for the Texans this year, they they put up a real good fight. Anthony Richardson honestly surprised me a lot, and I think he surprised a lot of people. He's a freak. It seemed like a lot of the talk in the offseason coming in was like, can he really throw the ball that well? Is he going to run? Which we know he can run, and we know he can do it well. He's a freak athlete. Yeah. But, I mean, some of the throws he was making, I mean, maybe they were just showing off his big arm. One of them was like a 60-yard throw yeah, was off his back foot to Alec whatever Alec Pierce. Yeah. There it is, Cincinnati grad. Um, and then he had another really good throw late in the game to get them close. Uh, but that but, is an issue still. Like, he, he can make those insane throws, but – Nine for 19 in this game. He's still got some issues with completing passes. Yeah, it seems like he's more of a home run hitter. He's got to be, you know, settle in a little mm-hmm. bit more and, and figure out how to make it work for the entire game. You're right. Nine completions in a game, oftentimes that's not going to get you done, or excuse me, get it done. And they almost should be lucky that they, you know, only completed nine passes and lost by two 
Uh, so, you know, they, they have upside there for sure. Yeah. No, yeah, Anthony Richardson's going to be electric, but I think it's going to be tough for the Colts to win, to be super competitive with him as quarterback. Yeah, definitely. And another team that uh, is going to try to be super competitive and uh, maybe surprise some people uh, and had a little bit more, you know, uh, potential than I think people thought they would in this season is the Cardinals. Only losing by six to the Bills. Bills heavy favorites in this one, I feel like. Josh Allen is an MVP candidate pretty much every year. Very, very good. Uh, and the Cardinals came out and looked really good in this game. At one point, they were up 14, 21 even, maybe. I, I know 17, you said. 17 not them. 17-0. Sure. Earlier today, you were trying to tell me 21. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think that was true. I felt like I would have heard a little bit more about yeah, that. Yeah, that would have been a bigger comeback. But Josh Allen, so, so impressive. Bills were six-and-a-half-point favorites. Obviously got off to a bit of a cold start. But I think the more Josh Allen gets comfortable with his new weapons, the better this team's going to be. Yeah, I think that's really a growing point. Like they lost Gabe Davis, they lost Stephon Diggs, but they do have new whip- new weapons. Mm-hmm. Keon Coleman made a really good gra- grab in this game. The uh, rookie out of Florida State. Yeah. I think Khalil Shakir is like really special. He's a slot guy. He's number ten for for them. He's a little guy, but he makes really nice runs after the catch. He's very special. He'll jump off the off the tape if you watch him pretty much any time he catches the ball. He had a really impressive run catch and run against the Steelers last year in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Do you do you think Curtis Samuel helps his team once he comes back? Do you think he's still at that level where he can be a top option for Josh Allen? Yeah, I do. I don't think he's a top option, but I think he's a third maybe even fourth option because they do have two good t- tight ends in Kincaid and Knox. Yeah. Kincaid did nothing in this game. Yeah, but I there was a lot of games where he didn't do a lot last year, and and I feel like that's how it is with a lot of tight ends. Like you look at, I mean, it's hard to, when you just look at fantasy. It's boomer doom. It's boomer doom. I mean, <laughs> you can ask AJ and Big Justice. It's boomer doom, especially when it comes to tight ends. Um, there's a lot of them who like some games they won't do anything, and then you look at George Kittle last year, three touchdowns in a game. Like the year, the week before that, he had like a catch and five yards, and mm. or maybe even not that, and. You know, when you look at, again, I don't want to look just look at fantasy because numbers can be deceiving and they obviously have bigger impacts on games than just that. But uh, receiving wise, tight ends are very boomer doom. Yeah. And I mean, Evan Ingram last year led the league in uh, in points by a tight end. This week he had one point. Um, and talking about that, Jaguars and Dolphins. Yeah. Dolphins came back in this game as well, won 20 to 17 against the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence looked pretty good early. Felt like late. Dolphins kind of took over. Tyreek Hill, too much speed, not just on the football field. Uh, arrested pregame. Pulled a little bit of a Scotty Scheffler. Got detained, was in handcuffs, in police custody in the morning. In the afternoon, scored a touchdown, played a very good game. Yeah, still balled out. Can't stop this type of guy. That was a weird situation. Uh, but Dolphins, they got a good team. Tua still unsure about him, but the talent around him is clear. Uh, I, I think Trevor Lawrence will ba- bounce back this year, though. That's my take from this game. The question really around Trevor Lawrence is, like, he's obviously got a lot of upside, came into the league as, like, one of the top prospects in a long time. Seemed like it was, like, he's the he's the clear-cut number one quarterback. He's going to be the number one draft pick. It doesn't even matter who's there. Ended up being the Jaguars. Since he's come in the league, it's kind of – has he been that great? Has he been average? Like, what's the deal with him? And it's almost the same way with Justin Herbert when you really look at it. Like, their kind records of, yeah. are just kind of mediocre. But also the teams around them, I guess, are mostly just kind of average, you know, yeah. above average. I feel like the expectation for – obviously the expectations for Lawrence were much higher than Herbert's. Yes, very, very but, much so. But, yeah, I'd agree that their careers have played out pretty similar. But the, there's talent. And their hair. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence never cut it, though. He needs to cut it. Really? Yeah, I, I think, think so, so too. It looks it. too wispy. It's too thin. It's it's not doing it in the NFL. That that stuff worked in, in at Clemson, but it's the NFL now. Cut the hair. Time to win some football games. <laughs> to me, it looks like he shampoos it too much. Like it's too thin. It, it looks mm. like a horse's hair. Like yeah. it looks like a tail of a horse. Like it I want it to be that like a show horse that like it looks like a show horse that's been like too groomed. It needs to be thicker, like mm. Gardner Minshew's. Yeah. Like, like it comes out the back, it. it's thick, it's kinda like a little bit of a curl, like it's too straight, too fine. Too clean. Me. Yeah, I don't know. Way Maybe I analyze his hair too much. Yeah. I've, I mentioned uh, Gardner Minshew. Yeah. We can jump to that game sure. real quick. Raiders losing 22-10 to 10 to the Chargers. 
Dom, you mentioned this game earlier to me, and you basically just said two bad teams, didn't really want to watch it. Yeah. Not a great game. Chargers win 22-10. to 10. Jim Harbaugh gets his first win as the Chargers head coach. Mm-hmm. Anything else to add on this one? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone pretty much saw this. Yeah, it's this a, game. A typical four thirty game. You know, they always put one game in there that just stinks. So nobody wants to watch, but you still tune in anyways. Uh, I, the only thing from this game that really stood out was J.K. Dobbins. Hopefully, he's back. Hopefully, he has a McCaffrey type of bounce back. With like his injuries have been a bit worse than his, but you know his his performance this week: ten carries, one hundred thirty five yards. I think he had a rush for sixty yards, a rush for forty yards. So he's still got something. Uh, it would be really cool to see if he could get back to the form he was when he got drafted. Yeah, I mean, that was really good to see from him. You're glad to see a guy who comes back from injury and comes back and, you know, produces like that. And isn't doing it on the Ravens. That's the best part. Yes, that's right. I, I like that as a Browns fan uh, out of the division. And, you know, he can really be a game changer for this Chargers team. Like, they're good. They lost Keenan Allen. They lost Mike Williams. Lost a couple of different uh, people on that offense. Got Lad McConkey in the offseason. I don't know how much he really produced in he this did game. Good. He was, I think, he was a leading receiver. He had five catches, thirty-nine yards, and touchdown. Oh, wow, that's debut, very good to hear. Yeah. And then they add J.K. Dobbins. You know, they've got a couple of new weapons, and I think it'll take time for it to fully mesh. But I feel like this, like the NFL schedule, was just giving them a gift, giving them the Raiders Week One. Well, Nothing well, against the Raiders. I think they're good, but I think that like they can be decent. But the Chargers here, like, that was clearly kind of, they should win this game, come out divisional opponent in week one, come out, win that game, warm up to make them feel good, build confidence, things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I feel like that's also kind of the thing that the Buccaneers got playing against the Commanders, which the last couple of years it seems like anyone who's played against the Commanders week one has gotten a gift. Uh, the Buccaneers win 37-20, to 20, and we mentioned it, Baker Mayfield, Browns fans, cover your ears. Baker Mayfield, spectacular day. Four touchdowns, 200-some yards passing. I think he had like four incompletions the entire day. Yeah, and, six uh, incompletions, four touchdowns. And that's, that's probably the best performance of the week so far. Yeah, I mean, right now we're recording this on a Monday right before the Jets and 49ers kick off. Um, but uh, that's going to be hard to top. Who would do it? Who, who do you think is more likely to top Baker Mayfield's performance, Aaron Rodgers or Brock Purdy? Probably Aaron Rodgers. But he hasn't played in two years. I know, years. but he's Aaron Rodgers. It's a back-to-back MVP right there. That is true, but Brock Purdy has more around him. That's true. That's true, but, I mean, he's got Garrett Wilson. He's got Garrett Wilson. Mike Williams now. Mike Williams now, that's mm-hmm. right. Just Anyone dump else? it off to Brees. He can make your stat line. I was going to say, Brees Hall makes a stat line pretty easy. Mm-hmm. A lot of screens, swing routes, stuff like that. But, I'm, yeah, truthfully, Baker Mayfield, quarterback of the week. Player yeah, of the he's, week. He's uh, and especially comparing him to the quarterback playing Cleveland this week. Yeah, it uh, it pains a lot of Browns fans, and yeah. it really, really, really hurts. I can see that. At one time, you know, you were here with me, Dom, on a show where I said that Baker Mayfield was going to be a future MVP and a Hall of Famer for the Cleveland Browns. Um, I changed my tune quickly, which I did a lot on Baker, and a lot of people did in Cleveland. Yeah. Went back and forth on him, but uh, just here, here's the thing on Baker. I think he partially sabotaged himself. He could have sat out that season. Oh, 100%. He he should have. He should have. He still would have been on the Browns today if he did. Yeah, Yeah, I I think everyone knows. I mean, they had Case Keenum as their backup, who was one of the highest paid backups in the league. A very, um, you know, a very, a guy you can put in and trust. He's a veteran backup. He's very capable. He knows what he's doing. He won games for the Browns in the past. Um, And they had probably one of the best teams that they've had at that point. And uh, and you finally got your coach, too. Yeah. yeah. That was the thing. You finally got the guy, Stefanski. I, I saw, like, someone, people online saying, you know, this was a two-time coach of the year. He can't, this guy just didn't forget how to coach in the NFL. It's Deshaun. Yeah, I, I, I clearly there's a problem there. Um, again, let's give the Cowboys their due, and then let's not talk about it, because... Cleveland fans have heard enough and thought about it enough. Let's yeah. give them 20 to 30 minutes now of not having to think yeah. about that. Let's give them some hope in the future. Maybe not the future of their team, but the future of the NFL because Jane Daniels, he's going to be a star. You think so? I do, yeah. He's on your fantasy team, is that what? He is. Why? No, <laughs> uh, but that's, this is a Heisman winning quarterback. He, he played really well as a rookie. 17 for 24, 
184 yards passing. I'm not sure exactly how many rush yards he had, but I know he scored twice on the ground. Uh, he's he's going to be good. That's a that's as good a stat line as you can ask for from a rookie. Yeah, yeah very good. Better than Caleb Williams, right? Yeah, definitely. Probably outperformed him. Yeah. Talking about a rookie quarterback, now the last game of the week that we have to talk about two veteran quarterbacks that were traded for each other, the Rams and Lions. This one goes to OT. Lions punch it in with David Montgomery to win 26-20. to Stafford return to Detroit once again. Doesn't go great for him. Yeah, uh, but watching Stafford, though, especially at this age, he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time, honestly. Like, uh, just in recent memory, obviously, you know, you got Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger. But after that generation, it's like Matt Stafford. Yeah, Yeah, I think that Matt Stafford was always a little bit underrated. Definitely, Him getting traded to the Rams was such a blessing, obviously, for him. But really, when that trade happened, I I immediately said, I think this is really one of the most win-win trades I've ever seen. Yeah. The the Lions downgrade a quarterback slightly, but still a guy who can get it done and lead a team. Mm -hmm. And they got a whole ton of draft capital. Yeah. The Rams upgrade at the position that is most important and get an elite quarterback that a lot of people don't really understand is elite because he's played in Detroit, who had been super, super bad for the last however many years that he had been there. And, I mean, you saw it. The Rams' first year win a Super Bowl. Two years later, uh, you know, the Lions are now one of the Super Bowl contenders. Mm -hmm. People talk about them as being one of the best teams in the league. And there you have it. I mean, it's a win-win trade. Unfortunately for Stafford, he had to lose two games now, so it's lose-lose for him. His last two games have both been losses to the Lions in Detroit, which is rough for him and the family. But it's not rough for Dan Campbell and the Lions. Detroit is feeling good about this season. Uh, Last season, they obviously felt super good, and I feel like this year they'll just continue rolling on that. They have guys like Amon Ross St. Brown who can just keep building on the confidence and and experience that he has. I think Jameson Williams is really going to make that jump, jump though. He had a huge game last night. Five catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. He might be here. Yeah, I think he's the guy who – you know, was obviously super, super talented, went to Ohio State, then transferred to Alabama. Kind of seemed like a guy who, like, always got what he wanted, though. Maybe a guy who, like, didn't show up to some practices or, you know, fully focus in meetings and stuff like that. But it was like, all right, guys, like, let's treat him the right way. He's really fast and really good, and, like, he can help us in a lot of ways. And I think now he's maybe buying in a little bit more. He just looks more focused, and I think that they're getting him involved in the offense more because of that, because he's more ready for it. Yeah, I agree. It was his time. There was, there was always like a missing wide receiver two in Detroit, I think. And they, they got it. So they're going to be definitely competing for a Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Not to mention Sam Laporta, second year tight end out of Iowa, obviously a stud Jameer Gibbs in the background backfield along with David Montgomery. That's a two headed monster. I don't think David Montgomery really gets enough respect. A lot of people love talking about Jameer Gibbs, And for good reason, he's really good. He's fun to watch. He is. But I think David Montgomery has been very consistent, especially when he was with Chicago. Bears really weren't that good then, but always found a way to make big plays. He went to the Lions. I was kind of unsure. Um, I was kind of worried about him because I had him on my fantasy team. Saw they drafted Jameer Gibbs. Wasn't sure how much uh, like opportunity he was going to get. Yeah. The way they balance them is really good. Like I, I really don't think you could do it much better. Yeah, honestly, I wish the Steelers could do the same with Jalen Warren and Najee Harris because they they've perfected the the running back split with those two. Yeah, and I think the Steelers could learn from that because they have two guys who have a little bit of different running running style, but both are elite running backs mm-hmm. at their best. The weird thing about the Steelers this weekend, they were using uh, Cordero Patterson a lot. I think he had more rushing attempts than Jalen Warren, which is interesting. Cordero Patterson can surprise some people. Oh, yeah. He's good. At his old age, I've always been a huge fan of his. He's a Swiss Army knife. He can go out of the backfield. He's kind of like an older, now slower Debo Samuel. Yeah, a little bit. I think that he kind of set that blueprint out for Debo Samuel out of the backfield, returning kicks, out wide, in the slot. Pretty much lined up everywhere. Yeah, I'm excited to see what the 49ers can do tonight. Yeah, and we'll talk about 49ers and Jets. Last year, of course, Aaron Rodgers plays one drive, not even a full drive, mm-hmm. blows out his Achilles. A yeah. lot of hype around the Jets. Uh, from last year, they had the hard knock show. 
Everyone was saying they're Super Bowl contenders. It's going to be awesome in New York. Gang Green's going to play great. We'll talk about Gang Green and some other nicknames after this break. But this year, 49ers and Jets kicking off the season against each other. Who do you got in this game? 49ers are three and a half point favorites, which I feel like isn't enough for the 49ers. I'm taking the 49ers to win, obviously, but three and a half, I feel like they, they get that number pretty easily. Really? All right. Well, I mean, the Jets have a very good defense. Yeah. They've got a lot of Sauce. Uh, talent. Sauce will lock up Ayuk, I think. Yeah, I mean, Sauce Gardner on the outside, and then they got the Williams brothers, uh, linebacker and, and uh, D-tackle. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the Jets are, are really, really good. Um, but I don't know if they can hang with the 49ers tonight. I think it's going to be – I think Brock Purdy is going to win or lose this game for the 49ers, mostly just off of his decision-making, yeah. truly. And he's he's had good decision-making in the past. I don't think he, – he just has to be game manager. Kyle Shanahan's a real impact maker, I feel like, and then the wide receivers around him. No McCaffrey tonight, so that might play an impact. But uh, I think the only way the Jets win this is if Brees Hall has an amazing game. All right, Dom, give me t- in five seconds, score score prediction. What do we got? 49ers, 35, Jets, 17. All right, you heard it here. You guys are going to be hearing it after the game. Let's, Let's hear, hear how score. off it was. Hear my score? Yeah. 216-859-8699 is the hotline to call in. Let us know what you think about the Jets and 49ers. This is Behind Enemy Lines on WSRR Radio. Welcome back to Behind Enemy Lines, a Cleveland show from Pittsburgh. This last 15 minutes of the show is brought to you by Clearview Windows, which has been serving Northeast Ohio for the 30 years. Clearview Windows is more than just words on a sign. Google Clearview Windows by J.D. Miller today or call 330-521-0965. Dom, I have a question for you. I'm looking at your window right now. It looks like it might be needing a little bit of an update. Did you know? That old drafty windows can cost you between a hundred and six hundred dollars a year. I believe it. My electric bill high as heck. Well, it's probably because of your windows. You call JD. I think you need to call JD Vance if you want to do that, Dom. The number <laughs> is JD Miller. You need to call JD Miller. You need to call JD Miller at three three zero five two one zero nine six five. He has no affiliation with JD Vance or the Republican Party, but he has great windows. Um, energy efficient and maybe it'll It'll cut your window your energy bill down dom i think that's what you need listening to behind enemy lines here dom i i saw someone this past week i was getting excited for week one of the nfl season and uh someone walks by me with a kelly green vintage uh eagles sweatshirt Mm -hmm. and in my mind i had a uh college roommate who was an eagles fan for two years and you know, I watched a lot of Eagles football with him and a lot of bad Eagles football with him. That was actually the year they were pretty bad. And I said to him a lot, go birds. Go birds. And seeing her, I almost just went, hey, go birds. Go birds. And I was like, this random woman doesn't need me to yell at her at 730 in the morning when I'm going to my car. Um, I'm not even an Eagles fan. So why would I yell that? Because it's fun to say go birds. Mm-hmm. Is it not? It is. Uh, I, I mean, it's always fun to just yell at somebody wearing a jersey. Just That's get true. fired up. I yelled at somebody in a park yesterday wearing an Antonio Brown jersey. Just go Steelers. That's all you need, man. And they loved it. See, honestly, I was uh, I was trained from living here in Pittsburgh that every time I see someone with a Browns paraphernalia or Cavs or – Guardians, Indians, I always would engage them no matter what. Oh, hey, go Brownies. Hey, go Guards, go Tribe, you know, mm-hmm. Cavs this year. Let's go Donovan Mitchell, you know, whatever. Yeah. Then after being in Pittsburgh, I would go back to Cleveland and see someone wearing a Browns jersey, obviously because they're in Cleveland. Yeah. And I'll be like, hey, go Browns. But then you're just the Browns fanatic in yeah. your hometown who's like, all right, guys, take it easy. I'm just wearing a hat. Yeah, you can't really do that. I mean, when I yelled at this guy, I was, I was in – South Central Pennsylvania, so it's a little different. In Pittsburgh, yeah, when you're I'm not outside, really yelling it to them. Occasionally, I'll be at like a outside a Pirates game or something. Someone will yell in my face, "Go Bucks!" I'm like, I mean, yeah, we're here. We're here in Pittsburgh. I think we're yeah. all rooting for the home team. You're so. in Pittsburgh, yeah. Okay. Maybe you're, when you're rooting for the home team, it's not quite as fun. Yeah, right? I mean, when we're in the stadium, like you can yell whatever you want, but just to me, when we're outside, I mean, 
it's when a, you're it's a bit much when you're in a different city though if you're behind enemy lines that's yeah. when it's fun to do it <laughs> i actually saw a guy at a flea market this week who had a brown sweatshirt on i was like hey man go brownies like in the heart of pittsburgh and south side i was like all right man there we go and he was like oh hey what's up i actually just got this down over at that store because i was wearing this brown shirt under and i was like man do you this guy came bronzed up today do you wear like cleveland stuff if you go on vacation yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you have to. You have to, because yeah. you have to find someone who sees you. Exactly. And then be like, hey, man. Yeah. Or your college. Mm-hmm. Oh, Duquesne. Yeah. Go Dukes, baby. The Duquesne one might be even better. It's yes. More it's even more niche. Yeah, the more exactly. niche you can get, the better. If you're a Go Dukes out in the wild, I mean, you know, yes. you're, you know you're home. Yes, and I think that that also kind of makes it the more niche of the reference the bet the more you know that that's a true fan and that's why you say go birds instead mm-hmm. of go eagles yeah and go lures instead of go Steelers. yeah and brown here we go brownies instead of just hey go browns yeah um or roll tribe instead of go guardians or whatever um so this kind of got me thinking and i just want to i want to hear your opinions on it what fan base has the best nickname for their team hmm. and i asked you this earlier and you kind of thought that I meant which fan base has the best nickname yeah. for the fan base. Yeah. We can talk about that too. But first, nickname for the team. I have a couple written down here. The Lures for the Steelers, the Birds for the Eagles, the Pack for the Packers, which isn't really, you know, just shortening it, the Jags for the Jaguars, whatever. G-Men for the Giants. It's a decent one. Gang Green for the Jets. Any other ones that you can think? Mm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, you got America's team. Cowboys. America's team for the Cowboys That's is a pretty, pretty good. good one. Legion of Boom. I don't know if the, you can still call them that, but that was a good one for a little bit. When you call when you call back to a uh, a group from a time period of the past, that also makes it good. Yeah. Purple People Eaters yep. for the for the Vikings. The Orange Crush for the. For the Denver Broncos yeah. defense, something like that. So with the with the Lurs, I hate that team nickname. Good, I'm really glad you hate it. If really, you liked it, I would be really upset. I think it's really dumb, and I think people who Steelers fans who say that aren't real Steelers fans. Now, Good. now if you say Blitzburg or the Steel Curtain, now th- that's that's a real nickname for for a team. More more Steel Curtain now that's or Stairway to Seven. Line. Yeah, I don't know if that's a, a team nickname, but I, I don't mind that one. But it's a it's a fan mantra you're yeah, trying to exactly. get. Exactly. What about Bang Bang Stiller Gang? That one's do you, okay. Do you like that? You like that? More, I hate it. That's more of like an independent thing that people have adopted. I feel like it's really dumb. Yeah, I mean, I'm it's not, not it's not the best. That's a, that's one of those fan nicknames, which I think some of them are good, but most of them are pretty stupid. Uh, the best one though is probably Da Bears. Da Bears, yeah. I mean, that's Simple. like. It's it's the team, but is that even a nickname? It's just the same thing, just saying duh. Exactly. It's great. Yeah, I guess I that's kind of the other one that The Greatest Show on Turf, that's another good one. Oh, that's a, that's an awesome Early one for the Rams. for the old Rams. The Hogs, the Reds. Oh yeah, that's there a you great go. One. Another one that you mentioned, Dub Bears, I really like is when Chris uh Boomer, what's his yeah. name? Chris Boomer, Berman? Berman, yeah. Boomer, Chris Berman he used to go the Raiders. That was always good. Every time you say Raiders, you got to run that. You know? Yeah. That's a pretty good team nickname. Yeah, I like that one. For another one for the Steelers that's outdated now is the Killer Bees. That the Killer Bees because they don't wear those air, those uniforms. Well, anymore. you just don't have. It was Ben Bell, Brown, <laughs> Boswell. So oh, like okay. Double, I never knew that was why they were the Killer Bees. Yeah, Isn't there also both. a Killer Bees for the the Pirates were Killer Bees at one point, right? With Bonds and someone else. I thought that was where Maybe. it was originally adopted. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Sorry, I don't want to get into Bonds, into Pittsburgh. Bonilla, Bobby Bonilla. Yeah, Bonds, Bobby Bonilla. Uh-huh. And uh, they had someone else too with the B. But fan nicknames, I mean, the first one that comes to mind is Bill's Mafia. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. Cheeseheads. Cheeseheads for the Packers is pretty good. Chiefs Kingdom, I think that one's pretty lame. Yeah, I don't like it. Duval, don't like it. Duval, you don't like that yeah. one? I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't understand I what like it is. T- uh, county that Jacksonville's in, I'm pretty sure. It's Duval oh, okay. County, I'm pretty sure. What about Skull for the Vikings? What is that? I don't know. Is that like a Viking? Is that a Nordic, Nordic yeah, thing? Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. They do the clap. Yeah, I like the They clap. got the big horn. I don't know what it means. I don't know what skull means either. It's like a dip. Every time I hear it, yeah, I was going to say, I think of the dip, though, which I don't condone doing and or and I also don't do. Used but. to express friendly feelings towards one's companions before drinking. Skull, and he raised his glass. This is, what is that, like a Viking thing? I guess. Like it's for Nordic Vikings? 
I mean, hey, you can't yeah, it's can't go Danish, wrong with that. Norwegian, Swedish for cheers. 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 Yeah, pretty much. Okay. A salute, or more accurately, a toast. All, All right. right. So I kind of like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. I like that. Lion Pride. Is that they say something like that, right? Yeah, in Detroit. I, think so. I don't know if I like that. Something similar to that. But I mean, the dog pound has got to be up there. Yeah, it right. Is. We get barking. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good one. No matter where you're from, that's that's a good one. You got to respect because it's better than like the some where it's just like Broncos country. Yeah, yeah. Like, Broncos country. Let's ride. Yeah, that's just that's, that's just a great that's a great saying. Broncos country. Let's ride. Raider Nation. I mean, if you have your team name in your. Fan base name, you're, yes. you're automatically disqualified. It does. Yes, I agree. What Most about conversation? What about the black hole they used to call? Yeah, it? no, Oakland, that one. The black hole. The twelves. Kind the of from A and M, but yeah, yeah. Seattle yeah. going the twelfth man. Yeah, yeah I, I said that earlier. They kind of stole that from Texas A and M, which I would only assume they stole it from Texas A and M, just because Texas A and M has been around longer than the Seattle Seahawks have. Yeah, got But be. I actually don't know. <clears throat> I have to be. I mean, I would assume yeah. so, right? Yeah. They'd what else is there? Uh, you got the Niner Faithful, I guess. Yeah, yeah but again, that has the name in it. Yeah. You got anything else on that list for me? Not really. Nothing good? Nothing that... Raven's Flock. Raven's Flock is okay. It's not Because bad. it's like, oh, you know, it brings in what a raven does. Yeah. You know? It's okay. Ramley. R- what? Ramley. Ramley? Yeah. Like for family of the Rams? I guess so. That's not bad. Uh, the, what about Who Day? Yeah, who days? Who days? Okay. okay, I don't understand it what it is. Bangles, really, like who dat or whatever. I think who day is the Bengals. That's what I was oh, saying. I and then that, who dad is the? Oh, that's the Saints. Saints. I don't freaking. I think they're both stupid. Yeah, I, I don't understand really either of them, and why are they so similar? Yeah, I I, I don't like either of them. The Dirty Birds, the Falcons. The Falcons. That might be more of a team name. Though. Yeah, that's kind of a fallback to, or a callback to like. When they had Deion Sanders and stuff like that, though, correct? Yeah. It's not much else about around uh, fan base names. I like yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the Dog Pound's probably the best. And I'd, I'd have to say that the Birds are the best team nickname, right? Eh, I don't know. It's it's good. It's nice and simple. It's quick. It's good for the Philly trash bags out there. Yeah, it kind of simple, simplifies it, makes them think a little as little as possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can get behind it. I can get behind it for sure. I think go, saying "Go Birds" is pretty fun. Yeah. I think it's a lot more fun than saying "Lurs," oh, even though it sounds That's very similar. Now that I say it, <laughs> "Lurs" and "Birds." The lures is just what does that even mean? Pennsylvania just gets too close. What's a lure? What's a stealer? Exactly. At least we know what a bird is. I'm agreeing with you here. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What even is a stealer? Well, Someone who works on the steel, steel yeah. mill, right? Yeah. Okay. I like it. Well, that's like look at better than most of the names. Shouldn't it be? Shouldn't they be then the the Pittsburgh steel mill workers? If that's yeah, what that they are. That's not as cool though. Because you don't see someone, you know, leaving the steel mill and be like, "There's a stealer." Steelers, Do you? Steelers? Did they used to say that? Probably not. But I mean, Steelers have to have the most unique name in the NFL. The Browns. Well, that's named after their founder. I mean, it is pretty unique. I'd say. I, I think that's pretty unique. They're named after a color. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, the founder. Yeah, Steelers and Browns are up there. Yeah, and then he left yeah. and overnight. Was, yeah. yeah, it's a long list of uh, tragedies for the Browns fans, but they're back. I think they're back next week. We, we talked about the AFC North being the best division in football last week. Um, after Week One, they're one and three, which is unfortunate. But I do still think they're the best. I also think they're probably the most like they have the most lore behind them, like. The Steelers, like you said, just the name. Mm-hmm. Like the Steelers has lore. The Browns named after their owner. Then the then Paul Brown leaves, mm-hmm. goes finds the Bengals. Ravens, like, oh. I thought. No, he Paul Brown went and he found the Bengals. That's okay. why they're Paul yes, Brown Stadium, that's right. and that's why they're also the same color because he copied off of it and he wanted them to look just like the Browns. But the Browns, I thought, moved overnight to Baltimore. That was like in the ni- That was in the nineties. Okay. So this was like. Even before that, this was way before that. We might need a history. Paul Brown left. Next, we could definitely week. do that. Yeah. Then, I, I, Paul, I mean, Browns fans will be really upset even hearing about this and talking about it if they're true Browns fans. They leave, mm-hmm. go to Baltimore, become the Ravens. Yeah. Which again, a Ravens is the name with a lot of lore behind it. Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. Poe once Jinx. upon a midnight dreary, I woke weak and weary. There you go. You know the whole <laughs> thing, the Raven, huh? huh? Yeah, the Raven. It's a good, it good poem. He's kind of. I've been reading a little Edgar Allan Poe lately. Kind of. 
Oh my kind of goodness, good, you're so well kind of read. Good stuff on there. You, you dog. dog, you. Just occasionally. I remember reading that back in school and being like, this is the most boring stuff ever. I'm yeah. Like, this is chilling. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> like it now. It's huh? kind of good. Yeah. It's vibey. Uh huh. It's, it's vibey. vibey. All right. Well, I like, to, I like to hear that from you that you're, you're well read and you're reading up on your poems. Yeah, keep reading your poems out there, folks. That's right. 216 859 8699. Let us know what poem you've been reading lately. This has been Behind Enemy Lines. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lucas, and that's Dom. Peace.